Uh, let's do a video real quick. One of my favorite setups. And let's go over the Babe Ruth setup. So we'll get this combo out of the way. So yesterday at 2.43 p.m., um, I said, now we're looking for a slingshot or a failure trade. So that was right there, right here at this level. Uh, traders were in the room that captured this. If you go back, look at the chat. Um, I posted this in the trade room. So at this level, how did I project this failure setup? Um, Grant had, had some really good, a uh, good run to it. What 42, 43 down to uh, 09. So just a really nice push uh, in the market of uh, over 30 S&P points potential. So how can you project this trade setup before it occurs? It's one of my favorite setups in the room. Um, we have four setups, remember. Uh, we did two really, or actually three extensive videos if you go to daytradingthefutures.com uh, and click videos, I went over this this specific setup. I nicknamed it the Babe Ruth, Ruth trade because it's a potential home run hitter when this setup comes up at these key zones. I'm going to go over specifically how to look for this trade setup. So at 243, like I said yesterday, where this box is, that's 243 yesterday. I said, we're going to look now for a slingshot or failure. Now, why would I say that? And, and how, how can I project that setup? Well, there's specific um, rules when you look for this failure trade. We have four specific setups that we look for. We have one, which is the first wave trade. That's after a trend change from red to green, green to red. Green to red, red to green, first wave. We have two. We have a slingshot trade. I'll go over that. Three. We have a Momo trade, which is momentum trade. These are only setups you need to learn with, the, with our methodology. These are all trend trades. So those are all trend trades. Three trend trades in a row. These are with zone trend. So if the zone is green, we're looking with trend, with continuation trend in that direction of the zone. So those, those are all what's called trend trades or motive waves. So those are the three trend trades you're going to learn in the trade room. And then the one corrective wave that we have, or what's called a counter wave. The only counter trade we have, or what's called a corrective wave. That is our failure trade. And that's number four. So these, these are four setups. Um, it doesn't matter what market you look at. Um, you can look at any futures market, um, really any stock, Forex, currency, even works in the crypto market. These four setups continue to come up on a day-to-day -day basis and a week-to-week -week basis. And they're specific times when these like to come up. So those are four top setups right there. We got the first wave, slingshot, Momo. These are all trend with zone trend. These zones are very, very important because they've been uh, back tested over a 30 year period. So we know the zones are very, very accurate for trend trading. We also know that with those, the first wave slingshot and Momo are the only setups we need to understand according to this methodology to capture these moves on trend moves. And then we know that the counter wave 
is this failure trade. So let's go to the failure trade first. I'll sort of go backwards today because I need you to understand this Babe Ruth trade. It's one of my favorite setups because it's a potential. I nicknamed it the Babe Ruth trade because it's a potential home run hitter. The reason I call it the nickname the Babe Ruth is a high reward to risk. You're not risking a lot to get a lot potentially on a big move on the Babe Ruth. This is a 120-20 on the ES S&P 500. That's my favorite Rinko size to look for this setup is the 120-20. So when, when I seen this market setting up for a failure, I posted in the trade room. I posted at 2.43 p.m. Now look for a slingshot or a failure. So what a slingshot. Let's go over a slingshot first and I'll go over a failure. A slingshot is when you have red zone. Zones are red. Market is moving down. And I got two signal lines. I got a small signal line and a larger signal line. The small signal line is a thin magenta line, the thin one, and my larger signal line is my thick one. So the key to my four setups are one is the key are these zones. These zones are very, very key to our trading setups. And then these signal lines complement the zones based upon confirmation. So if I am a red zone and I'm moving down and I'm red, which we were, a slingshot is where this small oscillator, the signal line, the small one, gets above 80 in a downtrend. 80 is this big red thick line, gets above 80 and comes back down and goes right down through my bull zone. My bull zone is categorized. These are my proprietary zones I came up with. My bull zone is categorized as between 40 and 20. That's my bull zone. So if I get above 80 and I shoot back down through that threshold of 40, 20, some traders like to let it go all the way down through to 20 for an entry. This is the bull zone. I want to break that bull zone. I want this oscillator to get up through 80, this red line, come back down through and shoot down through minimum 40. Some traders like to see it break through 20. It's another price bar that you're going to look for, another Renko bar. I like when it goes right through 40 for an entry. So that's called a slingshot trade. That's an entering off of a slingshot. You're letting the market get retrace, get into this retracement area above 80 and shooting back down through the bull zone. Your entry will be right when it breaks through 40. Some traders like to like to go through 20. This is the bull zone. You got to break through though, the oscillator. All right. So that's called a slingshot. Well, what happens is, is that these slingshots work very, very well with trend. I mean, you can see the one came over here also. They work great with my zone trend. I love slingshot trades because they are what's called full zone retracements. I call them FZR or slingshot trades, full zone retracement trades. All right. Because what they're doing is they're retracing fully into the zone or at the zone with trend, with overall trend. So what you're getting is you're getting a move here. You're getting an oscillator that comes up through, comes up through 80. Once it comes up through 80, it gets into the zone. I'm not trend changing. I'm still red. And then as it comes back down, I want to break through my bull zone. Here's my bull zone. 
As soon as it breaks through that bull zone, you got yourself a short. So those are slingshot trades, okay? A failure trade is a failed slingshot trade. So when I posted this in the room yesterday at 2.43 p.m., that's where this little box is, now slingshot or failure. What I recognize is my zone was green. I can't be a Momo trade. What a momentum trade is, a momentum trade has to be away from my zone. This is a momentum trade away from my zone. Green above, red below. And then I need the momentum trade, the oscillator, stay above my bull zone, stay above 40. Minimum 40 on my small oscillator. Now I want that to stay above my bull zone for momentum. Slingshot, I want to break the bull zone as an oscillator into the zone. Where my momentum, I want to stay above 40 because that's my key level. Okay? If you're buying. A failure trade is very simple then. It's a failed slingshot. So, as the market came down, so this one was a Momo and a first wave, red to green, came up, retraced, and then we got the first wave. But then we come down to the wave again. We come into the zone. Well, I can't look for a first wave because it's already off the board. A first wave is red to green, green to red, and it's a first wave, meaning the first, you're looking for the first buy or sell setup. So it's not a first wave. Now remember, I only got four setups that are the market, are the rhythm of the market during the day. Well, I only, I, it's not a momentum because my oscillator it broke down through below bull, bull zone of 40. So it's not a momentum trade. So we're not a momentum trade. So that's off the board. So I posted. We only had two trades left, and I walked through trades on Fridays. Um, where we're going to walk through trades from that 8.45 to 11 o'clock on all the trade subs like we did last Friday. For some of you traders that want to see trade after trade after trade before they happen. So I only had two trade setups left. So 2.43 I posted, now slingshot our failure. I knew it wasn't a first wave because my first wave's red to green. And that's the first wave. I know it's not a momentum trade because my small oscillator broke the bull zone before it turned green. It broke right through it, right there, the oscillator. So then I got a possible slingshot. So I posted right here at that level, here, that is a now slingshot or failure. Well, a slingshot has to do what? That I just went over. A slingshot, that oscillator now for buys, for sells, it's got to go down through the bull zone. Right here, got to break that minimum 40 or 20. Well, for buys, the slingshot's very simple. I got to break the bear zone. The bear zone, my proprietary, proprietary bear zone that I came up with over a 30-year test. My bear zone is 65 to 80. So if I don't break through 65 and 80, I don't have a slingshot trade. There's my bear zone. So if I don't break through that 65, 80, there's my bear zone. If I don't come up through here on this small thin oscillator and break through this threshold, when I turn a green bar reversal right here, if I don't do that, then it's not a slingshot trade, which it wasn't. So now my slingshot's off the board. So now just process of elimination. Now I know I only got one trade left. And this is how I spot these failure trades. I've done it for weeks and weeks for you guys in the room. I show you how to look for this before it comes up 
and these trades are not small. These trades could be high reward to risk trades. This was over 30 point S&P trade. I pointed out 20, 30, even pointed out a 50 point one before, before it happened. Because what if it's not a slingshot, then it's a failure. Now let's get into why, what's a failure trade then? A failure is a counter trade because it's against my key zone trend. But a failure can't happen unless I'm into my zone. That's why it works so well. Because it should be a slingshot. It should sling right out of here like this and continue down or continue up. So here's the key for a failure trade. One, or A, we'll pull, call it A. This is key. Shorts, large signal line must be below 40, my bull zone. It has to be below 40. You cannot have a failure trade if this large oscillator is not below 40. So that large, large oscillator has to break 40. All right, so that's check. We're good to go for a failure. As long as that large oscillator does not break 40, the best if it's below 20. Right there is a potential failure trade and a slingshot because it broke through 40. My, broke into my bull zone. Once that breaks, because if it got rejected there and stopped at 40 and started going back up, you don't have a failure trade, but it starts closing below 40. So when that happened at 243 here, I recognized one thing. I recognized I got a potential slingshot. My small oscillator is below 40, and my large oscillator is below 40. Well, I don't have a first wave. I don't have a Momo trade. I'm only left with now a slingshot or failure. So a failure trade, all you're going to look for is green bars to look for potentially getting in uh, traders that are going to get caught in the first red bar reversal. Now, this can happen with two double dojis also. A doji can form, and then another doji, and then a red bar. But that exact wrinkle bar, exactly this specific wrinkle bar is your short right there. Specifically, this specific Rinko bar to the exact bar. Exactly to that bar. Your stop, give me two ticks above that swing high. And it all set up based upon what? My large oscillator got below my bull, into my bull zone. And when I got a red bar, a green bar reversal in the zone, it's a, sling, a failed slingshot is a failure trade. The slingshot, the small oscillator, did not get through my bear zone, didn't come up through to pull us in on a slingshot. And what does that do? It pulls us in on a failure trade. Don't make it any more difficult than that. And these trades, a lot of you traders are really picking them up from the emails I'm getting, from the room chat that you are picking up. You guys are seeing these before they happen, and they are beautiful trades because these are high reward to risk trades. All right, so as we move through, remember a slingshot is this. So the first four setups are very simple. A first wave is going green to red and looking for that first retracement. That is a first wave setup right there because it turned green Rinko right back to red. This consequently was a Momo setup because as long as that small oscillator stays below my bear zone of 65, which it did, stay below 20, which is even better. That's a short. That's a first wave Momo short combo. The slingshot, we could have looked for a failure trade here, but the slingshot, another setup is when my small oscillator gets above 80, stays above 80. Then it's got to come back down and it's got to break through my bull zone, a break through 40. Right there's a short on another slingshot. That's potential 43 all the way down to 32. That was uh, a nice nine or uh, 
11 point trade just on a slingshot 11 points it, this is not trading for a half a half a uh, uh, you know three ticks four ticks five ticks these are five six seven eight nine point trades sometimes even the slingshots was a nice one and then you go into a momo where you're below the bull bull zone bear zone starting in the retracement stays below my 65 and you get a momo so first wave into a momo into a slingshot into a momo into a first wave momentum trade right into a slingshot field slingshot is your failure and the market just falls apart all right now if we look this morning this is live price action right now what we ha what we're having is so live price action what do we have i went from red to green so the first retracement into my key zone and I love when price stays above my shallow zone. That means a price has momentum. And I love when failure trades come up and slingshot trades when you get into my deeper zone. So that's key also. I love seeing failure trades come in at this zone area, my deep zone. And I love seeing Momo trades and also first wave trades. Momo trades have to be away from price like this. It has to be above all my zones. But my sling, uh, my first wave, I like to see in the in the shallow zone. So what happens? I go red to green. So what do we have? We only have four trade setups in the room. This is a first wave trade slingshot combo. First wave slingshot combo. What happens is my four setups, they'll come together, and they'll have combo deals where they come up. The same methodology comes up at the same price point in time. You get two of the same setup, uh, two different setups that come up at the same time. Because the first wave, red to green, there's my first red bars, red bars, red bars, first green reversal, Rinko. Look at my oscillator. Look at my thin oscillator. It goes below my small signal line, goes below 20, it has to go below 20 for buys for slingshots. Comes up breaks through my bear zone my bear zone is 65 to 80. there's my bear zone and right when it crosses through that 65 is your entry or traders will let it cross through 80 for a potential blow off rally that'd be the high of the bar that's 28 right now we're sitting just under what 36 going on 38 we're at eight point run right now in the S&P off that first wave slingshot. Then the market comes up, it retraces, it doesn't retrace to my zone. Momentum shows my large, if you, if, here's another tell also on momentum trades. If your art large oscillator is staying above that 65 bear zone, that's really good. But your small oscillator here is a momentum trade here. If it stays above my bull zone of 40, this is my bull zone. It stayed above 40 when you got the arrow fired off there, and we're in this trade right now on a long. So there you have a momentum trade in Momo. It's a Momo. It's a Momo setup. So you can see a slingshot buy is the opposite of slingshot shell. Slingshot shell sell, you want the small oscillator to get above 80, down through the bear's bull zone, and then you want the buy to get below 20 and get above that bear zone. Because the reason I call it the bull bear zone, you don't want to see this get rejected, guys, because this is where it fails. And this is how you, you, you find a failure is just a rejected slingshot trade. If this comes up, and this is why I gave you guys a big heads up, five minute heads up on this big 30 point potential run right there, is that you want the slingshot to come down into the zone and slingshot out of it, right? That's what I did here. It came up to the zone and it slingshot out of it. And we had a huge potential run on that slingshot. That slingshot was what? 23 down to 09. So 13 S&P point run on that slingshot. 
But this failure, all it is, guys, is a failed slingshot. So one of these four setups are going to continually come up with price action over and over and over again each and every trading day in all these markets. You just, it's process of elimination. If it, if it turns red to green, green to red, like this trade right here, that's a first wave trade. And it could be a slingshot combo. It could be a first wave Momo combo where this small oscillator stays above my 40 bull zone and I get a slingshot trade. It could be a first wave slingshot trade or a first wave Momo trade combo. Or it could just be a first wave trade where it comes up, I get a small retracement, get a continuation. Right? So Friday, what we'll do is I'll go on Fridays, I'm going to go over, stay on the mic from right around 8.45, I'll get in at 8.15. We'll start looking at trades right after 8.30, all the way to 11 o'clock, and we'll go through every one of these trades until around 11, every single one, before they happen. And I'll show you how this works on these four setups on a daily basis.